Hello learners, welcome back to Top Notch Online TV, The Ocean of Knowledge. With me today is none other than your chemistry mentor and your chemistry teacher, Tadias Baluka, The Ocean of Chemistry. Today, I want us to navigate uh, through the topic of carbon and its compound. And we are doing so using the undisputed octopus technique. We are doing so using the undisputed octopus technique. So we look at carbon. And with carbon, first of all, we start by looking at the other tropes of carbon. Carbon has two main naturally occurring allotropes, which is graphite and diamond. Let's look at what is the definition of an allotrope. Allotrope, allotropes are different crystalline forms of the same element in the same physical state different forms of an element in the same physical state. Carbon also has, it has two naturally occurring, a lot of that is now graphite and diamond, and it also has a synthetic allotrope that is fullerene. So the diamond and graphite were covered under structure and body. But let me review them a little bit. Diamond, in diamond, each carbon atom is covalently bonded to four other carbon atoms, leaving no electron free. But in diamond, it appears as an hexagonal, it has an hexagonal structure made up of hexagonal layers. And in, the, in graphite, each carbon atom is covalently bonded to three other carbon atoms, leaving, meaning that only three electrons of each carbon atom in graphite are used in bonding, leaving one electron delocalized. And that is why graphite is able to conduct electricity, but diamond does not conduct electricity because, because diamond, all the electrons are used in bonding. So it doesn't contain any delocalized electrons. So we are reviewing the diamond and graphite, in fact, by comparing them. So another comparison that you also learned under structure and bonding, you also told that a uh, Diamond has a higher density as compared to graphite. And what is it, why is it so? The high density of diamond, it is because of the close packing of the carbon atoms. The close packing of the carbon atoms is what causes the diamond to have a very high density. But remember, in graphite, the, 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 it is made up of hexagonal layers, which are held together by weak van der Waals forces. So the particles are a little bit sparsely uh, packed as compared to uh, diamond. Another issue is that diamond is very hard with a very high melting point. Diamond is very hard with a very high melting point. It is higher than that of graphite. In fact, we say diamond is one of, it is the hardest naturally occurring substance. And that's why it's used in making drilling bits. Because in diamond, we have uniform covalent bond. There is uniform covalent bond. And it has a giant covalent structure. Therefore, it has a high melting point, and also um, it is very hard. On the other side, graphite is a little bit soft and also a, a relatively lower melting point at boiling point than diamond, because in graphite, it has both 
the covalent bond and the Van der Waals forces. So the Van der Waals forces makes diamond to be relatively softer and to have a relatively lower boiling point and melting point as compared to diamond. The other issue, let's look at their usage. Diamond is used in making drilling bits because it is very hard. It is also used in ornaments, or rather in making ornaments because it shines when polished. Then we have a graphite, which is used as a lubricant because it is made up of hexagonal layers which can easily slide over each other, and that is why it is used as a lubricant. You can also be asked why graphite is used to make lead pencils. Why is it used to make lead pencils? Because graphite is made up of hexagonal carbon layers, which are held together by the weak Van der Waals forces, and they are able to slide over each other when pressed. Remember, for both use of graphite as a lubricant and as in manufacture of pencils, the statement appears the same, that graphite is made up of hexagonal carbon layers, which are slide over each other when pressed. But that is now for pencils. But when you're asked why they use it as a lubricant, you're just going to say graphite is made up of hexagonal carbon layers, which are able to slide, which are held together by the weak Van der Waals forces, and are able to slide over each other. So I want to give you the difference. For lubricant, you say it is used as a lubricant because graphite is made up of hexagonal carbon layers which are held together by the weak Van der Waals forces and able to slide over each other. So by telling us there is a carbon layers, you get there is a tick there, have a mark. By telling us that the hexagonal layers are held together by weak Van der Waals forces, you'll also be able to get there is a marking point there and hence they are able to slide over each other. But for pencils, you have to add the, point, the word when pressed. Then, now we can look at the, the third uh, allotrope of carbon, which was not covered under structure and bonding, and that is the Buckminster Fullerin, which appears a spherical, elliptical, it is, a, it is an elliptical tube, and many other shapes. Of course, the spherical fullerene is called, uh, it appears like a buckyball, and that's why it is called Buckminster fullerene. Just like, uh, just like graphite, each carbon atom is covalently bonded by three other carbon atoms, as you can be able to see on the diagram on the screen. Very important for you to be able to understand. So then we have the amorphous forms of carbon. Those are the, the forms of carbon that have no shapes. And these are the likes of carbon black. We are talking about now wood charcoal, we are talking about animal charcoal, we are talking about sugar charcoal, we are talking about salt, cork, lamp black. Those are the amorphous forms of carbon. I remember these are amorphous forms of carbon. They don't have a definite shape. That's why they are called amorphous. Amorphous, something that is amorphous, is shapeless. It has no particular form. And um, the amorphous carbon contains some fragments of graphite. But they do not conduct heat or electricity because of the irregular arrangement of the graphite fragment, a fragment in the amorphous carbon. So they could end graphite years, but the graphite fragments, or rather fragments, or rather particles, are irregularly arranged, and therefore they cannot be able to conduct electricity. We also, you can also be asked about the uses of uh, the, 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 you can also be told to 
give the uses of the amorphous carbon and remember animal or rather charcoal has the ability to, to dissolve liquids and gases and therefore can be used to make gas masks. This is also used to have a dissolve the coloring matter in sugar, in sugar refinery, refinery and also used in manufacture of tires by acting as a filler which reduces the tensile strength. Now, we also now look at now the physical properties of carbon. Carbon is a black solid. It is insoluble in water, but soluble in organic solvent. It is a poor conductor of electricity, except graphite allotrope. Let's now focus on the chemical properties of carbon. Combustion. Carbon burns in limited supply of air to form carbon to oxide. Carbon burns in excess air to form carbon for oxide. And the observation when you burn carbon, you are going to it, it burn, rather it burns the red glow. It burns the red glow that is carbon. And then we look at now. The, the sources of the oxide or rather of carbon. And we can look at now the case of a burning jiko. Let's look at a burning jiko. When you have a burning jiko, as shown on the screen, we have the part A. At the bottom of a charcoal jiko, carbon, which is charcoal now, it burns in sufficient air because at the bottom, the, the door of the charcoal jiko is open as you can be able to see from the screen, at the bottom, that is part A, is shown on the screen, carbon will burn in the excess air to form carbon foxide. If the carbon foxide formed in part A raises up at the middle, it defines the red hot carbon, which now reduces the carbon four to form carbon two oxide. So at part B, the carbon four oxide formed at the bottom of the charcoal jiko where there is excess air, is reduced by carbon, that is hot carbon, to produce carbon to oxide. Then at the top, again, there is a lot of excess air now, the atmospheric oxygen. The carbon to oxide formed at part B will react with atmospheric oxygen at, at the top to form again carbon four oxide. At, at the top, you can be asked to tell us the observation. And as you can be able to see from the screen, we have a red, uh, not a red, a blue flame. The reason why you see a blue flame, it is because carbon two oxide burns with a blue flame. And B, it is important to note that, and this is a precaution because I know charcoal and firewood are the most commonly used fuel, type of fuel in most of the local areas because they are cheap, they are abundant. Now, it is important to take a precaution when you're using a charcoal jiko, or rather a charcoal stove, it should not be used in poorly ventilated rooms. Since the carbon fog they produced, the carbon fog they produced will be reduced by hot charcoal to produce carbon two oxide. Or rather, in short, if you burn charcoal in poorly ventilated room, there will be production of carbon two oxide because carbon reacts in limited air to form carbon two oxide. So the carbon two oxide, when inhaled, it combines with with hemoglobin to form carboxyl hemoglobin, which is unstable compound and does not dissociate. Therefore, the patient 
or rather their both the person will die due to suffocation. So the carbon two oxide, when in L, is going to form combined with the hemoglobin, which is the component of blood that transport oxygen to form the carboxyl hemoglobin. This carboxyl hemoglobin will not dissociate. So it remains like that in your body. Therefore, it will not dissociate again to release the hemoglobin, which will keep on transporting oxygen. Therefore, the person will die due to suffocation. And we see carbon two oxide is a silent killer because it is colorless and it, has, it is also odorless. So when you inhale it, it doesn't have a pungent smell. You don't even know. You just feel very good. And with no time, you are not able to move. Because it is something that people don't know, you need to know. That for you to carry out any activity, you need oxygen to be used in the oxidation of food. That's now respiration, to be able to release the energy that you, you can even walk. So once you have no oxygen, you'll not be able to respire. There'll be no energy in your body. You become very weak. You'll not even be able to call anybody. You'll not be able to walk. And therefore, you'll just be able to die. Now, we look at now the uh, carbon as a reducing agent, as shown on the screen. Carbon can reduce any metal oxide, most of, not any, but most of the metal oxide, uh, to form the corresponding metal and carbon oxide. And this property of carbon as a reducing agent is used in extraction of metals, rather, is used in extraction of metal by reducing their metal oxide. The metals that are, that are reduced, that are extracted through reduction are the likes of lead, the likes of zinc, the likes of iron, even copper. So when you react hot carbon with copper oxide, you get copper plus carbon four oxide. The black copper, copper oxide changes to brown copper metal. When you also pass, or you also eat carbon with lead oxide, the yellow lead oxide will change to gray uh, lead metal. The same with zinc, it changes from white zinc oxide to gray zinc metal. Iron changes from brown iron three oxide to gray iron metal. Then iron, ca carbon, also react with very concentrated acids. I react with only concentrated nitric five acid and concentrated sulfuric six acid. In both instances, the, the observation will be a black solid dissolves. And also there will be bubbles. With sulfuric acid, there will be bubbles of a colorless gas with a pungent smell. Of course, add from the screen, also add the keyword bubbles. With the nitric five acid, the, 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 the observation, the two possible automatic observation, the black solid dissolves, there'll be uh, bubbles of a brown gas that will be formed. And the equation for the reaction are as shown. They are as shown on the screen. And we have come to the we have come to the end of the first part of carbon and its compound. Keep it here for part two, part three, and part four. And if you're here for the first time, remember to subscribe. And if you have any question, post it in the comment section. Remember, I'll be having live lessons for form two, three, and four. So keep it here, I'll be able by next week, we are going to be having uh, live Zoom lessons that will also be streamed live in through the Top Notch Online TV YouTube channel. Until next time, bye-bye. Keep circling wisdom 
rider from the Yupa command center, whereby we dispense it dropwise until in, in excess. Until any confusion you have, we dissolve to form a colorless solution.